Hi everyone, Kyle here from BF Light Shows. In today's build video, we are going to take the Experience Lights Pro Genius 16 and put it inside the Matos Designs MD1500. So all of the parts for this build will be available at matosdesigns.com and we will have a link in the descriptions. But we have two 12 volt power supplies. We have our AC power adapter. We have some D's nuts. We have the Matos Designs 16 port cable gland kit, the cable gland step bit, and then 16 X-Connect adapters. So let's get into the build. We'll show you how to do everything step by step and get your controller all set up. So the first thing I like to do with the Experience Lights boards is I will pop out these little brackets here and they are real easy. Basically you just spin it to the side and they will break free. So once we have the brackets detached from the circuit board or the controller, we're going to take our power supply and mock it up where it is going to go on the power or on the controller itself. We're going to take these brackets and wind them in the little grooves on the controller. We want to make sure that the top set of these holes is facing away from the terminals. That will allow us to stack the power supplies at an offset so you can get to both sets of screw terminals. So now that we know roughly the placement of these, we can go ahead and take our screws, lift out the bracket, and then we're going to grab our screw. And I like to start it by hand, that way I make sure nothing ever gets cross-threaded. We'll go ahead and we'll tighten this up. We'll do the same thing for the other bracket over here. Go ahead and we can flip this over and repeat the process on the other side. You want to make sure that the brackets are facing the same direction. Once we have that done, we can take our power supply, line up the grooves, there are little notches, and then we're going to line those up. And it will sit in there nice and snug. you'll see that the notches will actually go all the way through the circuit board. And then we can go ahead and use the four screw terminals to screw down the power supply. And then after that, our power supply is securely mounted to our controller. We can go ahead and take our second power supply if you're using more than one, and then we will attach this power supply to our brackets. If you look closely, these brackets are marked. We'll have a generic at the top, LRS 400 at the, in the middle, and then LRS 350, which is what these meanwhile power supplies are in the middle here. So, or I'm sorry, down at the bottom here. So go ahead, take our screw, try not to drop it. Then I'll throw that in. Then we are secured on one side and we just need to do the other side. And then once we are done with that, 
we have screws holding our power supplies to our controller. It is nice and secure and not going anywhere. And then we can take our first set of power cables and then connect them to our power supply. So this set right here is for banks nine through 16. This is banks one through eight. If you wanted to, you could connect this controller off one power supply, but you get a little bit more versatility. If you have two power supplies, you can run a few more pixels. So we'll do two for this build, and then we'll throw the other pigtail down here, and we'll connect that. Now we have both power supplies connected. We can go ahead and get our box ready. So we'll move the controller over to the side here. And you'll have a few extra screws and connectors and things like that. Um, we'll need to screw the actual controller into the Matos Designs box, but we won't need the nylon nuts in this case. So the Matos Designs MD1500 is a black sealed enclosure. There are no holes in it at all, which is nice. Make sure that it's nice and watertight, um, gives you versatility on however you want to create your controller build, but you will have to drill out your own holes. So I picked up one of the Matos Designs step gland drill bits. So this will allow me to drill a hole into this gland or into this box and then we can insert these glands to make sure that our connectors stay watertight. So you can come up with a jig or you can come up with a template, however you want to do this to make sure that it looks neat for your use case. We have these two, and then we have this network connector gland, and then we have one additional gland, which is gonna be for our power wire. So we will have to put four holes in the box. kind of mock up how this is going to sit inside. If we go with something along these lines, the connectors are all on this side of the box. So I want to make sure that these glands are on the right half of this box. And then the power connector we want all the way to the right and the network gland over to the left. So I will start with the smaller power gland, which I want over on this side. You wanna be careful not to over drill and make the hole too big. So that looks like it's still just a little bit too small, but it's getting close. So we can take the nut off of this gland and try to line it up. And it looks like it's almost there, just has to go just a, a hair bigger. And then you may also want to drill it from both sides um, the way step bits work, sometimes one side will be a little bit bigger than the other. So if you do it from both sides, you can get a uniform sized hole on both sides. So it, it just barely goes in there right now. Um, I do have to thread it in, so I'm going to make this hole just one notch bigger. So now it fits all the way in. We can go ahead and screw down from the other side. Now that that is nice and tight, we can move on to our larger cable glands. And these are going to basically be almost as large as this step bit goes. So we know we have to make quite a bit larger of a hole for these. One other thing I'd like to point out is you wanna make sure that you still have space to thread these nuts on at the end. So you're going to account for the fact that this diameter is smaller than the diameter once you have the gland on. So make sure you have enough space to be able to thread both of these.
So for the larger one, it is actually the entire step bit. So you don't have to be as careful. You're going to go all the way through with this one. So right now I have plenty of room to thread both of these. We'll go ahead and do the last one over here. And then we'll do the network gland over on the side. So this will obviously make a mess. So just be aware that you're going to have lots of particles after drilling these out. And then the last one is this little network gland here. So this part goes on the inside of the box. And then this part is going to have the weatherproof connector facing the outside of the box. So this one, you want to be very careful you don't over drill. So now that all of our holes are drilled out, we'll go ahead and we will slide this in from the inside of the box. Grab our nut here and go ahead and screw this on. So now we have our connector here and our PG glands over here. So I'll go ahead and I'll clean off this desk real quick and then we will start connecting everything. So now that we have our glands all connected, we can go ahead and we can take our power supply and our controller and set it in here and start to line everything up. I ended up just grabbing some of these tiny screws here to screw the controller in. Um, these were the only things that weren't included in the kit. So we ended up using four screws. So there's one in this top corner here, one in the top corner here, one on the left of this OLED screen, and then one to the right of these capacitors over here above port 16. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the these nuts labels and put them on our X-Connect pigtails here. We'll slide those through the glands and then we'll show you how the new clever locks on the Genius controllers work. So to use the D's nuts, you're going to basically just take off the old nut there, take the new one and go ahead and slide it on. And we are going to pull down on all of these tabs to get everything opened up. So here is number one. We are going to make sure all of the pins or clever locks are pulled out. We'll take our black wire Go ahead and slide that in and push down on the tab. Yellow is going to go to orange. And then red is going to go to red. And then once you're done, you should be able to pull on all of the three of these wires and they should not come out. We'll do port number two. on the wires make sure they don't come out and once we do that we'll just repeat the process for ports 1 through 8 through this first gland and then ports 9 through 16 in the second gland um, we do need to make sure that our pigtails are going through this nut and washer or this nut here um, otherwise you won't be able to tighten everything up afterwards Then once you have all eight, you can go ahead and you can slide the weatherproof nut down. And then you just basically screw it down to make sure that it gets tight. And 
And once it's tight, you shouldn't be able to pull on the pigtails, making sure that they're nice and taut. In here, you're still gonna have a little bit of play if you ever need to undo everything, but that way, when you are moving this in your yard and you're trying to get all set up, you won't be able to accidentally rip them out of the connector because everything is nice and snug in this connector. So you got one more to go. And we'll go ahead and tighten the last one here. For our network cable here, we can go ahead and connect this to the LAN port. Super quick build, two power supplies, very robust controller. We just have to add the power wire over here. You could drill extra network glands over here if you're going to use the DMX ports or the long range ports here. In this build, I'm not going to use those ports, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So we just had to have to add our AC adapter. And we're going to slide this through the PG gland here. And you can either buy two of these AC cords and connect it to two different outlets, or you can daisy chain these. I wouldn't recommend daisy chaining several, but if you need to daisy chain two of them, that is totally fine. So we need to be able to connect to the first power supply and then the second power supply. So I'm going to just cut off a little extra of this connector or this cable here, and then we'll daisy chain the two together. And then this build will be totally done. And you can put on fork terminals or just twist these together and then end up screwing them in. So we'll loosen up the terminals on our power supplies here. If you want, you can connect the AC power cord before you screw in the connector or the controller so it's a little easier to get to. Um, if you have the forks and you're sliding them in, it's really not that difficult to slide them in. Um, in this case, we're just going to do the pigtail, so I'll go ahead and put these in. Green is going to be your ground, white is your neutral, and black is your hot or your load. So you're going to do green closest to the DC side, neutral in the middle, and then load furthest away. Once you have that connected, just go ahead and tighten down your last PG gland here. And our controller is fully ready to go. So we can go ahead and we can plug in. The controller here, we will see it boots up. We have our green light. We have our OLED showing genius. And as soon as we connect a ethernet cable, it will automatically get an IP address. We can also scan the QR code for the Wi-Fi hotspot to join its network and we can set this up wirelessly. We hope this build video was helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment, send us a message or an email. We'll address it as best we can. The full parts list for this build are going to be available in the description of this video. All the parts came from Menos Designs except the Experience Lights board that came from obviously Experience Lights. I want to say thanks to David and JR for making this build video possible and we will see you next time.